All right, so yeah, uh, welcome guys. Um, this is Andrew, I'm a tech lead and software engineer at company, uh, Silicon Valley companies like Microsoft, LinkedIn, Snapchat, IBM, and um, Blackberry. So yeah, so uh, for this session, we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, the most asked technical interview questions from companies like Google, Amazon, all the fan companies in Silicon Valley. Um, yeah, and then before I get started, um, make sure to check out highconsort.com if you're looking for a full-time job as well as internships. Uh, I do a lot of technical uh, interview questions, answers uh, that are actually asked in these in these companies. I do group coaching as well as one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one mentorships on how to get into uh, a software engineering slash data engineering and data analytics and analytics role. So uh, apply the referral code Andrew and DREW on highcounselor.com. And then I'll do a prep for companies like Microsoft, uh, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Uh, uh, for, for, for my LinkedIn, um, go to my LinkedIn uh, URL that's shown on the screen share. And then we'll get started. So yeah, um, the first question that we're gonna uh, study together is actually gonna be, um, has to do with uh, uh, numerals, um, uh, strings, as well as um, sort of like, you know, uh, uh, like Roman numerals. So the question is, is this, uh, the Roman numerals are actually represented uh, by seven different symbols, uh, in case you didn't know. It's, uh, it's M, D, C, L, X, V, I, where, where the um, M stands for, well, it has the value of 1,000. D has 500, C has 100, L has 50, X has 10, uh, V has five, and I has one, okay? So the first question is, uh, and obviously, for example, a two is written as, you know, um, I, I in Roman numeral, just two ones added together. So 12 is gonna be written as X, I, I, because it's gonna be 10 um, plus I, I. The, the, the number 27 is gonna be written as, for example, X, X, V, I, I, which is essentially X, X plus V plus I, I. So Roman numerals are usually written largest to small, uh, smallest from left to right, but the, the numeral for four is not I, 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 I. Instead, the number four is written as I, V. So because the one is before the five, because the one is before the five, we subtract and making it four, uh, making four. The same applies to the number nine, which is gonna be applied as I, X. So there are six instances where subtraction is gonna be used. Um, so, the rules here, I can be placed before V and X, which is five and 10 to make four and nine. X can be placed before X, uh, sorry, L, 50 and uh, C, 100 to make 40 and 90. C can be placed before D, 500 and M to make 400 and 900. So our goal is to convert Roman numeral into integer. So for example, uh, if you're, if we're going to string, if we're given a string, M C M X C I V, that's gonna be 1994 because M is 1000, CM is 900, XC is 90, IV is four, okay? So again, as with the previous session, so I'm gonna give you around you know, three to four minutes to think about how you should approach this about the implementation and then we'll solve it together.
Okay, so let's let's try to solve this together. So we have we have the most um, you know uh, O of n solution uh, that can be done, or we have a um, couple of approaches, and one is very like intuitive, um, and one is more you know uh, a little bit more. Um, Concise. So let's try the uh, like a very very straightforward solution. We're gonna be passed in string s. Okay, so here we are essentially counting every symbol and adding its value to the sum, right? But we're subtracting the extra part of special cases. 
right? So every pi we see m d c l x v um, x v i, right? m d c l x v i. We're adding up thousand five hundred hundred fifty ten five one, and then we every time we see the extra part of special cases, we minus that or subtract that. So that's where you get a mi uh, minus two, minus two, minus twenty, minus twenty, and two minus two hundred and minus two hundred. So I mentioned there is a more concise solution to this, and for that we don't have to type in everything uh, as if it's hard coded. So for this one, let's try in Python code. So the trick is that the last letter is always added. The last letter is always added. And except, except for the last one, if one letter is less than its latter one, then that letter is subtracted, right? From the range here all the way to the end. If the previous um, Roman uh, is less than the, the one after, then we subtract. Um, then we subtract that letter. Um, but in other cases, the last letter is always added to Z. And you can actually do this using using a dictionary and travel backwards. But this is the general idea. You uh, initialize Roman numerals, and then you iterate from beginning to the end. And then if, uh, so in all cases, you add the last letter to Z, um, except the last one, if one letter is less than, um, less than its, its latter one, then this letter is subtracted. So this is the general um, solution, and it is asked uh, quite often, as is for me in, in my case. So let's try maybe a little, a little bit harder question. Question is, you're, you, you're given n pairs of parentheses. And you have to uh, find a way to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. So for example, 
you have n equals three. And the output is gonna be as such. Because these are well formed um, with the pairing is correct. Uh, it's opened and closed for each parentheses. So this is called well formed parentheses, and you have to generate all combinations of these uh, pairs. So again, um, uh, for the implementation, let's think about how we should approach this. And I'll give you three to four minutes, and then we'll solve it together.
Okay, so as most of you guys actually guessed correctly and um, thought through very, very nicely, you can actually solve this using our recursion. So the strategy here is that we add, we only add opening parentheses and closing parentheses that we know will guarantee us a solution instead of adding one too many closes. Again, we add these openings and closing parentheses that we know will guarantee us a solution um, instead of adding um, one, too many clothes. So once we add an opening parentheses, we will then discard it and then try a closing parentheses, which can only close a valid opening parentheses. So each of these steps are recursively called. So the, essentially the goal here is to print a string of opening and, and closing in certain order. So the length of string is obviously two of n, sorry, two n. And the constraint is that opening parentheses uh, need to match the closing ones. So without constraints, we just simply print out opening and closing until length hits n. So the base case will be uh, length equals uh, two times n. A recursive case is print out opening and closing parentheses. So that's why we have a code here. And then adding a opening and closing here. We have to add these constraints, so we need to be able to int interpret the meaning of the constraints. Well, firstly, the first character should be uh, opening. And second, at each step, you can either print open or close. But if you put, but print close only when there are more opening parentheses than closing parentheses. So stop, you stop printing out opening parentheses when the number of uh, parentheses hit n. So this actually merges and converges into second condition. That's why we have this recursive case. If open is less than max, then we you know, backtrack and use the helper with open plus one and S plus opening parentheses. If close is less than N, meaning opening is bigger than close, we backtrace with uh, closing plus one and we attach closing parentheses to the S because we have more opens.
Okay, so next problem. Next problem, we're going to try Sudoku. Uh, essentially, uh, this is one of the hardest problems that, you know, uh, we get faced. Um, maybe in like, you know, senior engineer or, you know, mid-level engineer. Um, but essentially, we have to write a long, uh, we have to write a long um, program and software to solve Sudoku pu puzzle by filling in empty cells, right? And obviously, Sudoku solution uh, has to so satisfy a couple of rules. The first one being each of the digits from one to nine has to happen, uh, has to appear exactly once in each row and exactly once in each column. Uh, and these digits must all also occur exactly once in each of the nine uh, three by three sub boxes of the grid. So for example, if we have this, matrix, the input's going to be something like this. And then you have, uh, so the dot represents a space. And then you go so on, on and on and on. And then the next row appears as six, seven. Two, one. Oops, sorry about that. That's gonna be done. Yeah. So your input is gonna be in this format. Let me just finish up this part. Nine. As such. Yeah, so uh, you're, and you obviously have to um, get the output in the same format as in this, um, uh, in this uh, matrix format. So your output's going to be, you know, uh, filled with five, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, which is basically filling in uh, these dots or periods as such. Okay, so this is one of the hard problems. And yeah, uh, we'll, we'll solve this together uh, after maybe uh, five to six minutes. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long problem. So let's think about the implementation first.
Okay, so the problem was uh, write a program or software to uh, provide solution on Sudoku puzzle by filling in the empty cells, which in the input file is going to be represented as a period or dot. So the strategy is going to be we try one all the way through nine and we execute one through nine for each cell. So obviously the time complexity is going to be O of nine to the power of M where M represents the number of blanks to be filled in. That's because every blank can have nine choices, right? From one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, ten. So details are going to be as follows. So let's, let's try this public class. We're putting in one, two, three, uh, nine in all the blanks.
So here, what do we do? Well, the basic method called Sudoku will check if the board is null and if it's uh, you know if it, uh, the length is zero. Obviously, then we then, it, then we just return. Otherwise, we're we're going to solve it. So the helper method does that for every i of the board length as well as the column and the row. If it's dot, meaning it's an empty cell, uh, we iterate from one to nine, one through nine as a trial, right? So in every character from one to nine, we, we try we try it. And then if, if that C, if that number is valid in the board, then we're gonna put that number for that cell. And then we, we solve, yeah, so we solve the board again. Um, and if it's the solution, then we return true, right? So what do we do? We put the number into the board, we solved it. And then if that returned true, then we, we solved it. But if that's, if the board is not solvable, then we simply go back and put dot into it. Essentially, in the end, the is valid is, is simply going to check the row, the column, and it's going to check the three by three block. So this is going to be the row, this is going to be the column, and this is going to be the three by three block. So it's going to check if it's valid for the row, column, as well as the three by three, because that's the requirement for the problem. So again, this part is the most crucial part. We check from one to nine. We put it in to that cell if, if you know if it returns um, you know valid entry, and then we try to solve it using that preset uh, cell which has been filled with you know some number c, and then we use recursion. You know, oh sorry, this should be help your helper. Yeah, we we, we use the recursion to solve the solve for other for the other uh, empty cells. So it's like we're doing a recursion for every cell that we try as a trial from one through nine. So the time complexity is going to be really high, nine to the power of m, where m represents the number of blanks to be filled in. All right. So I want to thank you and appreciate uh, extend my appreciation for another uh, great session with you with you guys. Um, please. You know, head over to Hyatt Counselor if you need more one on one mentorship or uh, technical interview questions and answers by uh, companies like Microsoft, LinkedIn, you know, Google. Uh, go to Hyatt Counselor and apply the referral code Andrew, A N D R W, and then I'll be happy, more than happy, to serve as your instructor. I'll see you guys again.